When it comes to video games, there's a lot to look at. The video games in action are a popular choice, but then of course you can look at the games not in action. And while you're at it, take a gander at the consoles themselves. After all, they're what's bringing these games to life. But why stop there? You can even stare at power cables if you want to. This standardized power cable with the two rounded edges is a gosh darned hero. It deserves to be stared at too. I know what I'm doing to win tonight, but as much as I've probably got you all riled up for an entire video dedicated to power cables, we're going to go back a step to consoles and how they look. But here's a question for you. Does the controller that goes with a console count as part of its design? Well, because consoles are rarely ever separated from at least one controller, and because consoles tend to come with one controller right out of the box, I'm going to say yes, and the Wii U fans go wild. Now, as far as the answer to a question like the best looking console goes, this is about as subjective as things get. Some might even say this is as pointless as it gets, but I'm obsessed with video games. It's what I do. It can't be that surprising. Now, being as subjective of a topic as this is, I'm guessing that how much somebody enjoyed playing a console will inevitably creep into their subconscious when deciding which console they think looks the best. Yeah, popping Choo Choo Rocket into this sucker was a sight to behold. So here's what I'm thinking. I'll give my answer for my personal favorite looking console, as well as what I think other people will say. And of course, to get to this point, I'm going to go through all of the consoles one by one. Well, not all of them, just the more well-known ones. Certain consoles won't be showing up because I don't own them. Shh, let's just hope the Atari 5200 fans sleep through this one. Something else we're going to have to keep in mind as we go through these consoles are the variations that come from within each console, due to things like different models, different designs according to region, and different colors and special editions released. Also, I'm going to leave handhelds out of this discussion. I mean, we can't just have this sucker dominate everyone's answers now, can we? But with all that, let's start with the Sega consoles, shall we? Ah, uh, Sega, the proverbial bad boy. If nothing else, you'd expect Sega to have some stylish consoles and a color palette that rivals the rainbow, black, black, and black. First up, let's talk about the Genesis, the Sega console that perhaps Sega is most famous for. Taking a glance at the Model 1, and there's a number of things that instantly grab your attention. They sure were proud of being 16-bit. High definition graphics, that can't be right. Why is there a volume switch? Why is there a headphone jack? What the heck's going on under here? What's this red thing hiding? Am I not supposed to be here? The best thing I can say about the Sega Genesis is that it looks like it would be right at home with any number of 80s stereo equipment. The volume and headphone indicators no doubt contribute to this aesthetic, but it's also just the font itself. It has a very edgy 80s look to it, and given the fact it was indeed released in the late 80s, I don't think I'm too far off. Certainly doesn't look like something targeted for kids, and gives the appearance that it can do more than just play video games. If we compare it to the Japanese version, which came first by the way, we have the Sega Mega Drive. Very similar, although I gotta say that I'm starting to second guess the North American version as far as how proud of being 16-bit they were. I mean, look at the size of the font on the Mega Drive. I understand that claiming to be the first truly 16-bit console is important, but if I didn't know better, I might just assume 16-bit is what the console itself was called. Where it says Mega Drive is so itty-bitty by comparison. And if you thought the US version was blowing smoke up your butt with its claim of high definition graphics, get a load of this. It says, AV Intelligent Terminal High Grade Multi-Purpose Use. My goodness, am I even qualified to operate this? 
Perhaps that's just a really fancy way of saying you can put different games in here. Ah, you know what? It turns out I like their way better. And I really like the way this looks in general. That blue is a nice little touch in addition to the red. Like I said, watch out, Rainbow. I'll also quickly mention the Model 2. Anybody prefer the look of the Model 2? But as you might have guessed by how long I talked about it, yes, the Genesis Model 1 is my personal favorite looking console. Moving on to arguably Sega's next most famous console, we have the Sega Dreamcast. And I'll just say it, I think a lot of you are going to choose this console. Designed to come right before the turn of the millennium, this console was meant to look like a gateway to the future of video games. As a result, it has a very distinct look to it, and one that hits home with a lot of gamers. Same goes for the controller, which Granted, not everyone is wild about using, but remember, we're only talking about looking at it and the N64 fans go wild. All right, but controversy time. Is the Dreamcast white or light gray? Or heck, maybe some of you are thinking you're all wrong. It's gold, baby. In any case, I think it was really eye-catching for a lot of people to see a Sega console that was all of a sudden not black. Add in the fact that it was fairly compact with a distinct mold to it, and you've got yourself a console that's quite pleasant on the old set of peepers. Then there's the Sega Saturn, fairly straightforward, and while I'm a fan of it, I do feel the need to say that if later consoles would eventually be criticized for being fairly nondescript black boxes, which you better believe they are, I think it's at least fair to ask if the Saturn deserves some, maybe not all, but some of that same sort of criticism. If you're looking to spice things up, you could always go for one of the Japanese models, which come in far more unexpected color varieties. Before we move away from Sega, I should briefly mention the Sega Master System, known as the Mark III in Japan. I don't personally own it, but I've learned to never underestimate the love that this thing gets. I mean, hey, it is a Sega console, but now let's move on over to Nintendo and start with the Nintendo Entertainment System, which varies drastically from its Japanese counterpart due to the fact that it was marketed less as a video game console and more as a entertainment system. When a lot of people first look at this thing, they instantly think about all the frustration they experienced trying to get the games to work. But remember, we're just talking about how it looks. I think the biggest thing going for it is that it has a very distinct look, which is going to be a theme for Nintendo consoles, by the way. When you see this console, you immediately know what you're looking at. It's iconic and it is probably one of the few consoles that people who are not well-versed in video games could identify. Add in its equally iconic controller design, and if you're somebody who loves it when a console yells, I am a video game console into your brain, then you're in luck. Next up, we've got the Super Nintendo. Yeah, this one is certainly not going to win the popular vote at least not the North American version, one of the most common reasons I see given is people don't like the purple buttons, but why do people hate purple so much? Sure, having red, yellow, green, and blue is far more colorful, but that's also been used in so many other different consoles. Think about it. It gets used a lot and isn't as unique. People also aren't fans of its more boxy design compared to the version released in other parts of the world that was far more rounded. When former Nintendo employee Lance Barr was asked about why the Japanese version, the Super Famicom was changed for North America, he famously said that it had too much of a bag of bread look. And you know what? I'd actually have to agree. I thought I owned a Super Famicom for a while, but no. It turns out I actually didn't, and it was a real bummer. The North American Super Nintendo is distinct. You gotta give it that much. 
I've personally always liked it because the color scheme reminds me of my favorite Super Soaker. Next up, we've got the Nintendo 64, and the biggest thing it probably has going for it is all the crazy colors you could get it in, including a lot of see-through colors, which allows you to see the insides of the console. This was the first console to really go wild with different color options, and when you add in the different colors you can get the controllers in, the amount of combinations is endless. Here's what I'm curious about though. While the N64 controller gets plenty of hate, as far as using it goes, does that extend to how it simply looks? I mean, there is no other controller that really looks anything like it. You gotta give it that. Then there is the Nintendo GameCube, which, living up to its name, is a cube. Perhaps the console whose name describes what it is more accurately than any other. A cube that plays games. Except how many cubes have you ever seen with a handle on them? Ah, and it's perhaps the GameCube's most famous feature. Not only making the GameCube itself look stylish, but also you as you head over to your buddy's house to play some Smash. And trust me, it's just not the same with other consoles. The compact size of the GameCube is certainly an endearing feature, and a feature that it could get away with given the size of the tiny game discs it would use. A nice small little form factor for sure, but I'm telling you right now, if this console is somebody's favorite design, they probably love the handle. When it comes to the Wii consoles, both the original Wii and the Wii U, their personality comes more from their controllers than the consoles themselves. Seeing as they're fairly nondescript, and even though I'm including the controllers as part of a console's design, I still think these aren't going to be many people's favorites since the consoles themselves are pretty simple. But who knows, some people like stuff clean and simple. My favorite drink is water, guess how many people have ever guessed that? All right, now are you ready for some more controversy? If I'm not including handhelds for this video, then does that mean the Switch doesn't qualify? Opinions may vary, but I would personally include it. I feel like the red and blue Joy-Cons have become a part of its signature look, helping add some personality to what is otherwise a fairly straightforward looking tablet. But hey, there's nothing wrong with that, and should we include the dock as part of the console's design? With all these variables, I'm expecting people's opinions on the Switch's design to be all over the place. Sony tends to play it somewhat safe with their console designs, but the most distinct thing you could probably say about the PlayStation 1 compared to the other PlayStation consoles is that it's the gray one. And yet, some of you might be thinking, wait, that's not a PlayStation 1. Ah, okay, yep. Now I see it, that's a PlayStation 1. I like the way the design cues of a PlayStation 1 really let you know that a disc goes inside of it. Its big, round, raised lid lets you know that's where the action is, with buttons scattered around it to perform all the functions you would need. Things get more interesting, in my opinion, with the PlayStation 2. As far as I'm aware, it's the first console that allows you to place the console either vertically or horizontally. Well, look at that, I stand corrected. You can even orient the little logo, a thoughtful touch. It could be seen as just a black box, sure, but those ridges cannot be ignored. And what feels like an ode to the famous ridges of the Atari 2600. The blue logo on black conveys a nice message as well, one that I've always interpreted as saying this is like the PlayStation, but things have gotten a lot more serious as we've gone from one to two. After this, the whole generic black box design philosophy really started to take hold of the industry. Although not immediately, as the PS3 looked eerily similar to a George Foreman grill, I can only imagine what this console means to the people who are fans of both PlayStation and George Foreman grills. We then had the PS4, which went for more of a generic black box design, with the slants and layers being perhaps its most distinguishing factors. After the PS4, we got the PS5, which certainly went for a much more creative design. Also, quick side note, a lot was said about how difficult these were to get, 
but I had no trouble at all. Now, my model is the one without a disk drive, a bummer for sure, and I've had a heck of a time downloading games onto this, but remember, we're not talking about how it performs, we're just talking about how it looks, and the console does look far more symmetrical without the disk drive, so points there. I really love the blue light and the vents on this thing. All right, but if we switch on over to the Xbox side of things, well, I hope you like black boxes, cause there's a lot of them. Makes for one sweet looking refrigerator though, I'll tell you that. If I had to guess, I'd say maybe the green original Halo Xbox could be somebody's favorite, or perhaps that Star Wars Xbox 360. But when it comes to the black boxes, I guess these aren't many people's favorite looking consoles, but who knows? But that does it for all the consoles I own. Perhaps somebody has a pre-NES console that they really like the look of. I've always thought the ColecoVision looked pretty cool myself. Oh, or maybe you like the look of the Turbo Graphics or one of its 500 variations. Now, some people may just flat out not care what a console looks like, and I totally get that. It's all about the gameplay, right? But what I find interesting is that a console's design is often trying to tell us something. Thing, part of its identity. These companies invested a lot of time, money, and resources into these designs for a reason, and it's a big part of how they market and brand the consoles. So when I look at a console, I always wonder what is this console trying to tell me, other than, you know, play me. My Genesis once told me that the Super Nintendo eats its own boogers, but that's just some old hard feelings at play there. I said, Genesis, come on and grow up. It's not 1992 anymore. But with all that said, I'd love to hear what your personal favorite looking console is, and I'm really curious to see what the most popular answers are. So leave your choice down below along with anything else you might like to say, and I will see you in the next video. <laughs>